Welcome to Coral Springs Community Church. Worship wherever you happen to be. Let's join together and worship God, our Savior. And if you're in here, let's go ahead and stand if you can. If you can't, that's fine. You can worship sitting without any kind of issues. Okay, here we go. The music's still going. There we go. maker of everything that we see no matter if we give credit to a human you gave them the ability and the wisdom to do so Lord we thank you for today we thank you that we can worship you corporately even though there are restrictions we still thank you and praise you that we can gather together yes. and for those that are over the internet 
and listening to this worship service, Lord, just bless them wherever they may be, at their houses, in their cars, wherever. You are not restricted by walls or distances, and we give you praise and glory. Lord, I ask today that everything that we would do would be for your glory, not worrying about the things that are happening outside or in our lives, but giving you all of our attention because you deserve it and more. I pray that you'd be with the pastor later in the service, that you would speak through him and give us your word for the day. And we just give you praise for that. For anyone who is hurting here today, you are a healing God, Lord, so you can touch and heal without any issue. And we ask that you would, if that's your will. Touch emotions. Just draw us into your presence, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise and glory. Lord, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you would move especially today Break down the barriers, soften hearts. Lord, it can be a scary thing to hear about surrendering. But Lord, surrendering to you is the best thing anyone could ever do. You have the plan. You have it all set out before us, Lord. We just have to surrender to your will. So please move in that way as well. We give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 So let's see if we can do this. We haven't done this for a little while. <laughs> okay.
friend. Did you know that? That you have power living on the inside. When you commit your lives to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes within, seals you for the day of redemption. You have the power of God living within you to do His will. There's nothing that can stand against you. If He is asking you to go do something, you can do it. Yes. You can do it. Even if you can't do it in your own strength, amazingly enough, we're not asked to do it in our own strength. Hallelujah. We're asked to do it in His strength. Yes. And He always provides yes. what we need. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Amen. Romans 15.13 May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 From the rising of the sun, when the day has just begun, all creation sings a song of praise. And when the night is closing in, I will hide beneath your wings, and I will put my trust in you always. Cause every power in earth and heaven knows your name. Every trial and every season Troubled waters rise on this rock. I'll build my life, and I will put my trust in you always. Should I wander far from home to the dark side of the sea? Even then your hand will keep me safe. the depths of my despair, I will live this broken prayer, and I will put my trust in you always, cause every power in earth and heaven knows your name, you have searched my heart and loved me just the same, amen to that. Troubled waters rise on this rock. I'll build my life, and I will put my trust in you always. And all your promises are sure. You'll be behind me and before, and you surround me. I'm covered by your.
Praise God. Praise God. God is awesome. Oh, welcome, everybody. Welcome back. It's great to be here in the house of the Lord, like Jonathan said earlier. Um, great week. On Wednesday, we had a nice group come out. So it was great to, to see people face-to-face -face and in person on a Wednesday for, for a great Bible study. Right now, let's get ready. Let's uh, clear our minds, open our hearts, and get ready to receive the gift that God is giving us today. Father God, we come before you this morning giving you thanks, honor, and all glory. Lord, we thank you so much because just of the overwhelming love that you give us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I ask today that you speak to us through the pastor. That that message that you've given him, Lord, that it comes directly from you. Lord, that we don't focus on anything else but you, God. Lord, I, I present to you a lot of unspoken prayers that are in this room right now, Lord. And we know, Lord, that every time we ask you for something, Lord, it's a yes and an amen, Lord. So we want to thank you for that. Holy Spirit, just keep us focused on what it is that we need to be focused on, on the important things, and that's everything that surrounds God. Lord, I ask you all of this in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Kids, you can be dismissed if you're not already leaving. Kids, you can be dismissed. No. Um, there's a little course that we probably have sung before, and I was thinking of it as um, we ended that song. God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to, how about He answers prayer, does He answer prayer? He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. One more, and I love him so. Sing it out. And I love him so. Yes, I do. I love him so, I love him so, he's so good to me. <laughs> I'm going to ask something different this morning. Anyone have a praise they just want to give to the Lord this morning? Just a pop-up testimony, something that you want to just say for the Lord. You had a good week. You feel his presence in a powerful way right now. Anybody just have a testimony? Someone's got to stand up maybe for the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas, Dad. Um, just have a great day. 
Awesome. Praise God. Keep it going. Keep it going, anybody. Yes, Jasmine. I don't need to preach. Actually, I'm trying to get my sermon to pull up here. And it's not pulling up. That's okay. I'll still have something I can say. Interesting how that's working here. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Yes. Stephanie. There's been prayers lifted up for you guys. I know it's been a rough couple days. You know, I have two aunts who are very sick, not doing well. Probably may not be sick. But praise is both of them have been living with the Lord for years. So even though it's sad that they may be passing on now or in soon joy they're going to have being with Christ hmm. the land their husbands have already passed on to be with the Lord so they get to see them again so although it's time of sadness and worry since they can't be visited it is a time of worry because I know where they come from so I thank the Lord for that Amen. I'm glad to see there was no storm this weekend because this place is a lot more full than it was last Sunday, so we are glad that, is it Ida, Ada? Iota? No, whatever it is, is gone. Yes. Um, speaking of which, um, I have some hearts I'm going to put up. I want you to know, as you all have been talking about, that God still answers prayer. We have this basket here, and I pray you haven't given up on the basket. Um, there are needs in here, there are, that, there are requests in here that those of you have put in here, they've not been answered yet, but don't stop praying. Some of the things that I'll put up later on the board here, I have an unspoken request. I have another unspoken request that was answered. My niece and nephew in Tennessee for the longest time we're trying to get pregnant and the family got to praying they're now expecting so God is working with that and this is this is always a little scary to share this because I didn't ask my wife if I could share this now I will say this if you have if you can't tell by now I am abiding by the no shave November rule okay so no shave that is until my wife tells me to shave so that's the way it works all right but anyways I have a heart here that's going up some of you know this some of you you know we've been talking about this but my wife received her full director's credential for the day school now um, now, now listen, let me just say this. Um, again, many of you kind of know this. But whenever we knew that we were going to need a director, the authorities, the school, the Broward County School Authorities, they basically said, you have about 45-ish days to find a credentialed director, a licensed credentialed director. They're just not hanging on every tree, okay, folks? And, and the Lord was leading us and was leading Stephanie to this position, but she didn't have that. And listen to this. It's about a six to 12 month process 
to be fully credentialed. And the authorities were giving us 45 days. Something had to give. Then COVID hit. And just to let you know that God can use anything. Because during this COVID period, the school authorities in Broward County said, you know what, we're living in unusual times. We're just going to keep extending that deadline month after month after month and finally they gave us a deadline and she finished it long before that she she finished it in about three months which is incredible okay but that is an answer to prayer and I give all glory to the Lord Jesus Christ and um, God I'm not saying that God brought COVID just so she could get her credentials but my point is he can use anything He can use anything. Had it not been for that, we would have been in trouble. But God knows. So folks, don't give up on prayer. Don't give up on God. Be faithful. Keep keeping at it. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm sorry to tell you my computer did come back up here. My laptop or my iPad did come back up. Maybe God wants to make sure there are things I do say. Uh, Just real quick before I do jump into my message, just wanted to give um, from the pastor here uh, just one last update with our Thanksgiving outreaches, okay? Um, the, The baskets, again, Um, You know, those of you who have, you know, requested that you need a basket, uh, we have all that information. What we are still needing is uh, food items that are on the list, correct? Food items are on the list. And uh, so if you could bring those in by this Wednesday, any food items into the church that are on the list by this Wednesday, or if you just want to donate food or food, donate money to this cause, just see Christine, because whatever doesn't come in, we're just going to go out and buy at the grocery store, okay? So the deadline on that is by Wednesday as well. We are still needing money to buy turkey gift cards, so, um, you know, keep that in mind as well. If you just want to donate money so that we can get all that we need and all the turkeys that we need, that will be great. So that is the Thanksgiving Day baskets. Today, we're going to be taking up our love offering for a Thanksgiving outreach for the Women in Distress Ministry. And I never talked to him, but Mr. Peters, or if you're able at the end of the service, just hold an offering plate in the back, okay? So there's not going to be any passion around the plates. So today at the end of the service, as you are leaving, whatever offering God has placed upon your heart, just put it in the plate that Rick will be uh, holding. It, yes? Yes, it's on my notes. If you're making out a check, make it out to the church, but in the memo line, just put women in distress love offering or woman in distress. And the church will just write one check to this ministry, okay? If you're watching us at home and you're wanting to get funds into this, you have until this Wednesday by 1 p.m. to bring your monies or on the app, you can donate money on the app um, and that is labeled um, women in distress on the app, okay? If you're wanting to give uh, money to the baskets on the app, it's labeled Thanksgiving love offering. So that's a little confusing there, but see, Christine, if, if, if you have any questions on that, I don't want to do a long commercial here, um, but that's this Wednesday by 1 p.m. on the funds for the women in distress. Did I answer all the questions? I think we're good. Enough of the commercials. One of the passages that we studied this past Wednesday, which by the way, I just loved Wednesday. I thought it was really cool. We came together for the first time since March-ish and just studied the Word of God. And uh, we did that together. So I encourage you, we're coming together on Wednesdays. We can socially uh, distance ourselves. But one of the passages that we uh, studied Wednesday night was 2 Timothy 2.4, where it says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Another translation says, they do not ensnare themselves with, the, with civilian life. Colossians tells us to set our minds on things above, not on things of earth. But this can be very easy to forget. 
Last week we talked about how easy it is to get wrapped up too worried, too anxious with the affairs of civilian life. It's so easy to get wrapped up and to panic over COVID still, to get worried or anxious over the elections that we've come through. Instead, we talked last week that what we should be focusing on is that one good thing, and that is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, we learned last week that when we do this, we will experience freedom from fear. Whatever fear you might have, you will experience freedom from that when you sit at Jesus' feet. You experience peace and rest. You experience strength. And you also experience a proper perspective. I didn't have time to say everything that I wanted to say last week, so guess what? You get to hear the rest of it today, part two. So here we go. Three more things this morning I want to share with you whenever we sit at Jesus' feet. And some of you may say to yourself, okay, what exactly does that mean? Sitting at Jesus' feet. What it means, folks, is spending more time with him. Simple. What does that look like in your life? I don't know. I'm not God. Only God can reveal what he wants more of you. More time in his word. More time in prayer. More time in worship. uh, Praise and worship. More time with your family. More time focusing on him. More time turning the TV off and reading. Whatever it might be. God will reveal to you what it is. But I've told you those four or five things last week, this morning, a couple more things. Here's the first thing for this morning. When we sit at the feet of Jesus, his voice will be the only voice we will hear. His voice will be the only voice that we hear. Envision again with me, if you would, last week's events. You don't have to turn there, but in Luke chapter 10, we have the scene to where Jesus, and we don't know how many showed up, to Martha's house for an impromptu lunch. And there is Martha flying around, making sure everything is prepared. I kind of had this thought in my mind. Martha's flying around to make sure there's plenty of chips and guac, right? Making sure there's plenty of chips and guacamole. Maybe making sure that the punch bowl has, has enough sherbet in it. Don't you put sherbet in when you make punch? Is that what you do? Something like that? Don't run out of sherbet. Make sure that Jesus has enough rolls because Jesus just has something for bread. He's, al- he's always like bread, you know. There's just, he has something that he just really loves bread. He talks about it all the time. She's flying around making sure everything is taken care of. And every once in a while, I can just imagine Martha stops and she says, Mary! Mary, can you please help me? Mary, hey, sis, are you even listening to me? But there in the middle of the room, Martha's sister is oblivious to what's going on around her, nor has she even heard Martha's voice because Jesus' voice is the only voice that she's listening to. Folks, Jesus' voice is the only voice that you and I need to listen to in this life. This is the only voice. Voices. (laughs) We talked last week about all the voices that vie for our attention, and there is no shortage of voices. Um, What I did is the other day I pulled out my phone and um, I looked at all the apps that I have on my phone. How many apps do some of you have on your phones? Probably more than you would realize, right? Um, to me, I, I have YouTube, face, Facebook, ESPN, Bleacher Report, which is a sports app. I have Gmail. I have the Weather Channel. I have White Noise. I have the White Noise app. We've talked about that before. And that's just to name a few. All of them... You know what I'm talking about. All of them will have ads that just pop up all the time. Ads, ads, ads. Why? Because they're trying to get my attention. Different voices trying to get me to click on this button or click on this ad. 
What about social media? Social media is a voice that is trying to get our attention. Just start naming some of the different social media uh, platforms that are out there. Just what? TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, huh? Snapchat. What else? Parlor. Pinterest. We could just go on and on and on, could we not? How much time do you think people in our society are spending on these apps? This is going to be a, a say amen or ouch maybe point, and probably we all might have to say ouch to a degree. Um, <clears throat> there is a documentary that's recently, recently come out called The Social Dilemma. And it explores the dark, the dark side of social media. It's fascinating and yet scary. Now listen, I typically do not dive real deep into things like this in my messages, but as I was preparing this week, I remember this documentary. I thought of this documentary and all the voices that are vying for our attention. And so I'm just going to take like three or four minutes and, and, and inform you and also warn you. I'm not trying to get you to stop using all these social media platforms. That's between you and God. But I am going to inform you and allow the, allow the Lord to speak to you. This documentary spoke to former social media giant executives and former software engineers for a lot of the platforms you all just named. And they, they all agree that the industry has lost its way. They claim that social media was designed to do good things, provide helpful information on everything from ordering a car on your phone to life-saving services like finding an organ donor online. But these former executives say that today's social media has created monsters rather than creating tools for the common good. They say profit is now driving social media. And the goal today, listen to this, the goal today is to keep people on its platforms for as long as possible so they can attract as many advertisers as possible. And what's amazing and scary is these companies are looking at your behavior. They're looking at what we read and what we're searching for in order to know how to tailor their ads to us. They said that social media firms, they want your data and they will do anything to get it. Every, this is a quote, every single action you take is carefully monitored and recorded. These are quotes from former executives at these, sir, at these social media sites. Every single action you take is carefully monitored and recorded, said a former social media employee. To maximize data collection, social media companies need more people to visit their sites. They need them to visit more often and stay longer. And companies will accomplish this by using psychological tricks of the trade, addiction by design, in order to manipulate behavior. This, many experts say, is damaging our mental health. Children who spend their free time on social media are more likely to be anxious, depressed, and according to psychologist Jonathan Haidt, social media use is even to blame for higher rates of suicide. Like I said, I'm just giving you the information, just warning you, I'll allow the Lord to speak to you on this, and listen to this. I think we can all say amen to this. Social media is intentionally fostering a political polarization, which is eroding our critical thinking skills. The documentary cites a recent poll showing that the United States is more divided than ever, especially in the field of politics. People who identify, listen to this, and you would have to say this is probably true, people who identify strongly with one political party often perceive the political views of anyone in the opposite party as a threat to society. Folks, it never used to be like this. And then the last thing that they cited is social media thrives on spreading, not my words, their words, fake news. 
making it impossible to know what is true and false. Listen, voices all are, are all over the place. Be careful. Be careful. I thought of a verse that I, that I gave you a couple weeks ago in Deuteronomy. It says this. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently, diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, this is Moses speaking, that the Lord your God will set, set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the what? Voice of the Lord your God. There's only one voice that we need to be listening to and obeying, and it's the voice of our Heavenly Father. One of the voice, or one of the verses that we talked about on Wednesday was this verse in Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than social media. No, that's not what it says, but you know what I'm saying. More are they to be desired than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than TikTok. No, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The voice of the Lord can be found in his word, his law, his testimony, his statutes, his commandments, the judgments of the Lord, and in having the fear of the Lord. You see, it's the only voice that Mary cared about that day. And when we take the time to block everything else out in our life and just sit at the feet of Jesus, we'll find his voice rises above all the rest. This happened to me yesterday. <laughs> I was listening to some worship music and just, I got to tell you, it was one of those glorious moments. Um, to where I was just listening to worship video after worship video and song after song, and I felt the Lord's presence so strong, and I'm just sitting there weeping. And in the middle of this, this was YouTube, in the middle of this, an advertisement broke right in the middle. And, it's, and it started to tell me how I can become a billionaire. <laughs> and I just kept waiting for that five, four, three, two, one, to go, to, and then I could hit skip and go back to worship. Look, the voices are all over the place. And my question to you is, what voice are you listening to? When you sit at his feet, tune every other voice out, and you'll hear his voice only. For my next point, I want to go back to Mary and Martha. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> uh, we go back to Mary and Martha, but this time the scene is a bit different. I believe I have this up on the screen, but John chapter 12, the first eight verses. Here we go. <clears throat> then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box. And he used to take what was in it, what was put in it. 
But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Here we have another family gathering. Very well could have been to celebrate what took place in the chapter before. John chapter 11 is where Jesus actually raised Lazarus from the dead. So it could have been a celebration, a new birthday celebration for Lazarus, so to speak. His first birthday. (laughs) Could have been. Martha, well, she's serving again. But this time, it seems different. Because there's no rebuke. There's nothing nothing, uh, wrong that necessarily she is doing. Mary, Mary leads me to my next point, and it's this. Probably one of the more poignant points of this whole two-part series is when we sit at the feet of Jesus, we will worship him every time. You know, it could be rightly said that Mary lived to be at Jesus' feet. In Luke chapter 10, we talked about it last week, where was Mary found? At the feet of Jesus. In John eleven thirty two, 32, the Lazarus episode, it says this, when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. And here we have, in John chapter 12, another time when Mary is at the feet of Jesus. But listen, every time that Mary was at the feet of Jesus, Jesus did not correct her. As a matter of fact, he defended her. Which tells you and me that that's exactly where we need to be. Remember, worship is anything that we do that pleases the heart of God. Anything that we do that pleases the heart of God. And in this second account, Mary's just not sitting there now listening to Jesus as last week's story tells us. This time, she's what? She's acting out her love for Jesus. An extravagant act of service that became an extravagant act of worship. Here, we see her take the role of a slave because it was the role of a slave to wash the master's feet or to wash the feet of the guest. A very dirty, demeaning, degrading, humbling task. Here she is taking on that task, but not just with typical water. She's using the flower of spikenard. Spikenard is a flowery plant <clears throat> that is grown in the Himalayas and in China and in India and Nepal. It, it was crushed and would be made into that perfume that you see there and uh, an oil, but it was extremely expensive. Judah said we should have sold it. She should have sold it for 300 denarii. Folks, that is about 300 denarii from what all the experts say is about one year's worth of wages. Now, in today's society, that could be, that little vial of uh, spikenard could be thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. What a sacrifice. But listen, true worship often comes with great acts of sacrifice. True worship often comes with great acts of sacrifice. You see, when Mary broke open that vial, she was in essence giving her all to Jesus. She was giving Jesus her heart, her emotions, her past, her present, her future. She was giving Jesus her time, her dreams, her wishes, her desires her adoration and praise, her highest esteem and admiration, her adulation, her reverence, her total and complete devotion. Maybe she would have, in today's society, would have given Jesus her cell phone. 
Maybe she would have given Jesus. What are those things that we as a society hold near and dear? I believe she was giving it all to Jesus. There was nothing more that she could give. What can I show the Messiah? I just sat at his feet probably a couple weeks ago, and now he raised my brother back to life. And what can I do to give him, to show him how much I... There's only one thing that I have to give. I have this spike nard that I've been saving, 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 but I don't care. I'm going to give it all. Her most precious thing, perhaps. These are the types of things that happen when we sit at Jesus' feet. I have to tell you, yesterday, whenever I was in that moment of worship in my living room and the tears were just coming and... and um, <clears throat> Some of the things that had been bothering me, I'm just telling you, I'm just, they went away. They went away. Not that I just buried my head in the sand and act like they weren't there, no. But, and I told Stephanie, I went, she was in the back room, and I just said, wow, I just had a wonderful moment. All of those things that we worry about, what things were you worrying about, Pastor? None your business. (laughs) You have things, too. But those things that I was, that's kind of been frustrating me, I'm telling you, whenever I was in that motion, that, that, that moment of worshiping the Lord and sitting at the feet of Jesus, they did not matter. I could care less about those things. Because that's what happens when you're at the feet and you worship Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to give you all a visual right now <clears throat> that's going to be very pleasant for you. You ready? It's on the PowerPoint. Here it comes. Get ready for it. I told you it was pleasant. See, aren't you glad you came to church today? Isn't there just something about fresh baked chocolate chip cookies? Right now, if I asked all of you to close your eyes, how many of you could just smell it? Oh, yeah, we could all just smell it. Yeah. It's one of those things. Is there anyone here that doesn't like chocolate chip cookies? I can't imagine. Oh, oh. <laughs> I only, she only likes Brenda's chocolate chip cookies. That's right. I think we all could say that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think I've lost control here this morning. Yeah. Chocolate chip cookies is something that we never forget. We're coming up on Thanksgiving. And if I ask you to close your eyes, I'm, you know, we could all probably begin to envision the smell of that turkey or the smell of rolls or the smell of whatever it might be. Our senses are powerful things. Listen, when Mary performed her extravagant act of worship, we're told that the sweet aroma filled the entire house and it was so powerful that the Apostle John, when he penned these words some 30 to 60 years later, remembered how powerful that was. Uh, The experts say that this gospel was written anywhere from 60 to 90 A.D. They don't know for sure, but my point is, 30 to 60 years after this happened, John still remembered. You see, extravagant acts of worship will never be forgotten. Hmm. When we sit at the feet of Jesus, it will produce acts of extravagant worship, sweet-smelling aromas that will fill the rooms of our life and will fill the rooms of other people's lives as well. Spending time with Jesus, having sweet communion with Jesus will produce mountaintop moments in our life. Moments that we will never forget. If I had time, I'm sure some of you could stand up and and tell us about those mountaintop moments that you had in your life. I'm reminded, you don't have to turn there, reminded of Luke chapter 9, the Mount of Transfiguration. Some of you remember that story. What took place is Jesus went up on a mountain. I believe it was Mount Hermon. And he took Peter, James, and John with him to pray. And it says as they were up there that Jesus' face, it says, was altered. And that his robe shone bright as snow, as white as snow. He took on the glory of God. 
And it says at the moment that Moses and Elijah showed up. And just like the apostles, they were sleeping. (laughs) Duh, they were sleeping. But when they woke up, they saw what was taking place. And Peter realized what was taking place, at least he thought he did, and he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. It is good for us to be here. And he wanted to build three tabernacles, three shelters for all three of them. He didn't know what to do. He probably just should have kept his mouth shut, you know, because in the moment, he didn't know what was taking place. You ever have those, those awkward moments to where it's quiet and silent and you just want to break it? You want to say something? <clears throat> Sometimes we just need to be quiet. And in that moment, a voice from heaven in the midst of the cloud said, this is my son. Listen to him. And I can just imagine that just like Mary, they did not want to leave the mountain. For heaven is never far from those who linger on the mountain with their Lord. Let me say that again. Heaven is never far from those who linger on the mountain with their Lord. What are you talking about, Pastor? Heaven is never far from those who stop watching as much TV and get into their word and pray or just listen to worship music or take a quiet walk. Heaven is never so far from just being still. Look, I can, I, I mean, my mind is filled um, with memories of camp meetings and revival services <clears throat> to where I was just there amongst the congregation or I was there leading music. And at the end of the service, altars are just filled. People are coming up one after another after another and the altar is filled and they basically close out the service, but people are just surrounding the altar um, <clears throat> the, the Hollow Rock campground that I do up in Ohio every year, it's like that. Uh, there, are, there are services to where it's just packed with people after people. And, and the presence of God is so thick. I don't want to leave. I just want to sit there, and oftentimes I do. I'll just sit there with the congregation. I'll sit up on stage. Sometimes I'll go down and pray with people, but I'll just sit there, and I'll just, like, man, God, I don't want to leave. Why is that? It's because people have chosen the one, the one good thing. They have chosen the right thing. And it will not be taken away from us sitting at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> wow, if there's ever a message that needs to be spoken in Broward County, with as crazy as it is, this morning I was coming here and I, they just have a natural, I, I don't know, I mean, people will just go two or three lanes, boom, just like that, without even signaling, without even looking, without even knowing what's going on. I mean, are you kidding me? I'm a Midwest boy from Ohio and they don't do stuff like that, you know. Of course, they don't have more than two lane roads either, but no, I'm just joking, I'm just joking, just joking. Crazy. We all need our mountain mountaintop experiences times and places listen we all need times and places to where we can get away from all the stress get away from all the turmoil in order to worship and have sweet fellowship and communion with christ daniel in the old testament if i wasn't running close on time i would explain this more but daniel had his mountain top experience when he was in his room with the windows open while the roar of wicked Babylon could be heard. Peter had a mountaintop experience on a roof in Joppa where God gave him a vision that would entail you and me, that would include us as Gentiles uh, in experiencing acceptance into the family of God. Martin Luther found his own upper room in a room there in Wittenberg, Germany, the place where God revealed to him the truth that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The place where the great Reformation, uh, Protestant Reformation was born, a place that is still considered sacred to this day. Before I hit my last point, 
my last point won't be nearly this long, but before I hit my last point, there is a neat thought, there is a neat parallel here. In John chapter 12, the very first verse, it tells us that Jesus visited his friends six days before Passover. Folks, do you realize that was just six days before Jesus would die for the sins of the world? And I thought, how interesting. Here in this picture, in essence, Mary offers the most precious, extravagant gift she could give her life. And six days later, Jesus offered the entire world the most precious, extravagant gift that he could give his life. <laughs> Doesn't that make you just want to worship him? Doesn't that make you just want to sit at his feet? It's hard to do. It takes effort, especially here in Coral Springs area. And lastly, sitting at the feet of Jesus will prepare us for service. It will prepare us for service. Look, we are all, and when I say all, that's what all means, and that's all that all means. We are all called to serve our Lord in some form or fashion. You don't have to turn there, but in um, <clears> 1 <throat> Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the various gifts that one can use for their service for the Lord. It says this, I'm just going to read here. It says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all of these things, distributing to each other one individually as he wills. Notice that there is a common theme here in the gifts, these, the gifts of service, so to speak, that we were talking about. It says that they are all the result of the Holy Spirit's working inside someone's heart and life. However, the question that you might say is, how does one allow the Holy Spirit to help them serve? Well, it's what I've been talking about. I believe it's by sitting at the feet of Jesus. It's by sitting at the feet of Jesus, and like Mary, it's giving our all. This is how one is filled with the Holy Spirit and endued with power to serve. There are many people around this world in churches who are serving, but they're not serving with Holy Spirit power. They're just doing. They're just serving. They may be really good at it, but it's not making an impact in the eternal kingdom, in God's kingdom, in his heavenly kingdom. Let me remind you that Martha's various acts of hospitality, and by the way, that's a gift, gift of hospitality, her various acts of hospitality were not necessarily a bad thing. But in our first story of Luke chapter 10 last week, she was so busy with the secondary things that it took her focus off the most important thing, the one good thing. When we don't take the time to sit at Jesus' feet, and boy, I'm talking to myself, when we don't take the time to sit at Jesus' feet, listen, our service can turn into times of hollow service hours. We're just getting in our hours. Even causing us to whine and complain. Have you ever whined and complained about your service for the Lord? Oh boy. Holy smoke. We should all be at the altar at that, for that at times. This is what Martha did. So what Martha did in, in Luke chapter 10, she was whining and complaining to Jesus. 
Why is that? Because she was not giving priority to the one good thing. Here's my question for you. Are you so busy doing for Jesus that you have no time for Jesus? When I do this, how many fingers are pointing back at me? Three. I'm not pointing my finger at you. But I believe that that statement right there is probably hitting someone right now. We can be so busy doing for Jesus that we don't have time for Jesus. You see, we can work, 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 even in the church. We can serve, 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 even in the church, but that's not what pleases him, nor is it what the Holy Spirit uses. Service that is anointed, service that is Holy Spirit-led, as Corinthians just told us about, only comes when we first take time to sit at his feet and worship him. band you all can come up there's a specific psalm that I asked them to lead us in here you want to know how you can serve the Lord do you want to know what God wants you to do I'm going to ask that again to make sure everyone heard me Do you want to know what God wants you to do? Do you really want to know how you can serve the Lord? Sit at his feet. Starts there. Sit at his feet. Give him your extravagant worship. Then you will hear his voice then you will hear him telling you what he wants you to do. Just because you can sing like the angels doesn't mean that you should be on the worship team. Just because you're good with words doesn't mean that you should be a teacher. God may want to use that, but he first wants to make sure that we are so filled with his presence And out of that presence comes service. I say these last few words and then I'm done. Before any one of us can pour out our hearts for service to the master, we must pour out our hearts in worship. And this comes when we spend time with him, when we hear from him, when we commune with him, when we sit at his feet. For that's the one good thing. Last week, I gave you a challenge. I don't know how many of you took that challenge. I challenge you to allow the Lord to speak to you and what's one thing that maybe you can eliminate, one thing that you can adjust, one thing that you can change. What's your priorities? Maybe God wants to align that in order to give you more time to sit at his feet to hear from him, to listen to him. Have you done that? Or maybe this has been a week to where it's just been voices after voices after voices and bow your heads with me, please. Lord, wow, the things that you want to tell us. The experience that we can have the mountaintop experience that we can have if we will just take the time God may we stop doing and may we start being spending time with you yeah God thank you so Lord this morning as we sing this closing song We sing it, I pray, with the heart of Mary. And Lord, I think it's okay for us 
to work like Mary or work like Martha, but have a merry heart. Serve like Mary, Mar Martha, but have a merry heart. That's okay. And that's what you call us to do. Whatever that is in the church, whatever that is in our home, whatever that is out in society, may we do that this morning, Lord. We love you, Lord. Speak to us now. We, I believe you already have spoken to us. God, as we enter these holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, may we take the time to sit at your feet. There is another Mary that held your feet, Jesus, when you were an infant. And we bow at your feet, Jesus. And we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand, sing this song. When they sing this song uh, one time, we're going to close the service unless the Lord has something that he wants to do. The altars are open. Um, I haven't done this for a long time. Um, boy, I haven't done this for a long time because of COVID, but I will say, if you want to pray and if you want someone to come up with you, then you can come over here on your left side, my right side. If you're coming up to pray with someone, just probably be respectful with your mask. But if you want to pray by yourself, come over here. If you don't want anyone to bother you, if you don't want anyone to lay a hand on you, you can come over here, and this will just be your time with, with the Lord as we sing this song. God bless you.
Hey, just bow your heads. God is in this place. Amen. Jonathan, we're going to do that, just the chorus, just real softly. It's your breath. It's your breath. Sing that again. Sing that again. It's your, in your breath, breath in our lungs. So we pour out our grace. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. God. In our lungs. So we pour out our praise again. Only it's your breath. Maybe this is the only time you've come to worship. Maybe this is the only time you've really worshipped God this week. Worship Him. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. One more time. No more than one more time. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise into your breath. Our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Yeah, praise God. Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your presence that is here. Lord, we are not worthy. We are not worthy to sit at your feet. As John the Baptist said that he wasn't even worthy to untie the sandals from your feet. Father, we are not worthy to be at your feet this morning, but we thank you. God, I pray that this morning is that moment that some, if not all of us, will begin to tune out all the voices. And when we're in your presence, when we commune with you, God, your voice will be the only one we hear. You will hear your voice is the one that says, don't worry about this, don't worry about that, I'll take care of that in my own time. What I want is to spend time with you. Yes, God, may we do that this morning and in the moments to come. God, as we leave this building, we know that the voices are many and the voice of the enemy will be strong and he will do his best to derail us and to sidetrack us, to deter us. God, may we not allow that. May we keep you at the front and the foremost of our heart and of our life. Thank you, God, for visiting with us today. Amen. Victor. Amen. Praise God. Uh, some quick announcements. Um, in, in lieu of, um, uh, since we cannot do the uh, silent auction for the day, day school fundraiser this year, um, uh, please don't forget that the sign up is in the back to do your Christmas photos and also for the that's my pen uh, those orders are due um, December 4th for the that's my pen and the Christmas photos the sign up is there and it's next week Saturday uh, you have three of the greatest photographers here who will be taking photos I'll be watching them um, <laughs> Uh, just a, 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 a quick reminder, we are doing the love offering. Rick is in the back. Uh, for those of you who want to do it online, you can, can do it through, through the app. If not, you could always just drop it off here by Wednesday. Okay. And that is pretty much it. Yep. Okay. So let's pray. Father God, we come before you this afternoon, Lord. Just thanking you, Lord, and giving you honor and all grace. Lord, thank you because just us, we want to be with you. But more importantly, and you being the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you want to be with us. Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you that. There are no reservations to sit at your table with you, Lord. There's no hoops. There's, no, there's, there's, there's nothing crazy that we have to do. It's just accept you into our hearts, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be with all of the families here, and all of the families watching online. Watch us as we go our separate ways, wherever it is that we're, we're, we're going. Lord, let us be sensitive to you and everything that we do and everything that we see and all the apps that we go into, Lord. Lord, just watch over us. I ask you all of this.